Hi, what you just saw was my dream car, a Tesla Model X P100D, accelerating at approximately 6 meters per second square, faster than gas-guzzling supercars like the Lamborghini Aventador. But have you ever wondered how we managed to convert electricity from the chemical energy stored in its cells to force and then torque in its wheels? How do we convert electricity into force? Well, there's one equation at the center of all of it giving us that the Lorentz force is equal to B I L sine theta. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The force on a current carrying conductor. Not only does this formula have vast applications practically, like in electric motors or electric cars, it also has vast theoretical applications. For example, you know, when we talk about quantities like meters, we know that, let's say, the distance from uh, our home to a certain location is a certain number of kilometers. But how do we really define what one meter is? I mean, is it the length of someone's foot? Is it the length of... I don't know, from one's shoulder to the tip of one's uh, hand. To really define what one meter is physically, scientists have to use the speed of light. Similarly, how do we define one ampere, the unit of current? I encourage you to search it up, and if you want, uh, I can make a video about it. Just let me know, I'd love to. But its definition actually is thanks to this formula up here. So let's get started and let's talk about bill sine theta, as I like to call it. Okay, so let's take a situation in which we have a north pole above and a south pole at the bottom. Now we're going to assume that uh, these are relatively huge poles and the separation between them is not much, which would make it so that the magnetic field lines are relatively parallel to each other and we have what is called a uniform magnetic field. So in such a scenario, we are ignoring the edge effect, which is that around the edges of the poles, the magnetic field lines are actually going to curve. In fact, even over here, we'll have some slight curvature. So we're just simplifying the situation and ignoring that uh, slight curvature due to the edge effect. Now, say we have a wire in this region of the magnetic field, and we're going to take both of the ends of this wire, and we're going to connect them to a uh, battery made up of two cells. Now, the current, as we know, will flow from the positive terminal to the negative. So, relative to the magnets, we are flowing from left to right. Now to find out the force, also called the Lorentz force, that is L-O-R-E-N-T-Z, Lorentz force, on the wire or the current carrying conductor due to the magnetic field, we will use the formula bill sine theta, in which B is going to be the magnetic field strength, also called the magnetic flux density on a more technical level which is measured in units called Teslas, which we'll represent with capital T as they are named after the scientist Nikola Tesla. Now, uh, the magnetic flux density, if you remember from when, we, uh, when you might have learned field lines, where the field lines are more dense, this field is going to be stronger, right? And hence, you can think of magnetic flux sort of as field lines. And so magnetic flux density is seeing how dense these field lines are. And therefore, this B is the magnetic field strength. Because the more the dense the lines are in a certain area, the more the field strength is. I is going to be our electric current uh, passing in the current carrying conductor, which we'll measure in amperes. And L is going to be the length of the wire that is exposed to the uh, magnetic field. So we're going to consider the length from here, this end of the magnetic field, to here. This over here will be our length L. And finally, theta, which is the angle between the wire or the conductor and the uh, magnetic field lines. So in this case, let's say the angle is 90 degrees between the uh, lines and the wire. So we can say that sine 90 uh, will become one 
and hence we can simplify this equation and just write it as f is equal to bill. Also this length will be measured in the SI unit meters and this angle we typically measure in radians. Uh, that's the convention in physics but if you want degrees will also work as we are ultimately just doing sine of the function so it'll be the same either way. Now say I give you the values for the current and the length of the wire and the magnetic field strength in this uh, circuit over here you can probably determine the force. The force will be in uh, newtons. But even if you find out the magnitude of the force in newtons, uh, we must remember that force is a vector quantity. So what about the direction? This function, bill sine theta, only gives us the magnitude. And here is where Fleming's left-hand rule comes in. So the derivation for how uh, this formula arises and how it gives us the magnitude of the uh, force, it's quite interesting and it actually uh, raises a lot of questions about the very nature of physics and how it's based on certain axioms or assumptions. And so I've made another video on that which I'll link uh, in the description. So do check that out if you're interested. Uh, but for now, we're going to talk about the direction and I'll talk about how Fleming's left-hand rule comes about. So say you have the same scenario as above with um, current passing in our uh, wire from left to right and our magnetic field running from up to down. Remember that the field lines are always in the direction of how a north pole would behave. So that's why they're going towards south and away from north as the pole would be attracted to south and repelled from north. So in this case, uh, when we have a wire with current uh, going through it, you'll remember from the right hand corkscrew uh, rule that this current will generate a magnetic field around it. If you take your right hand and make a thumbs up and point your thumb in the direction of the current, you'll see that our, uh, sorry, I made this arrow wrong. Our, f our magnetic field around the wire is going to be running like so. I'll uh, draw that better. So it's sort of going like this. Uh, and it's a 3D picture, so it's going into the page at uh, where the south, po uh, south Pole is placed. So we'll represent that with a cross. And it's coming out of the page where the North Pole is placed, so we'll represent that with a dot. So effectively, now if we talk about the effect of this magnetic field on the uh, permanent magnets we have placed, you will see that because the magnetic field is out of the page over here due to the current in this wire, so the north pole, because the magnetic field represents what happens to a north pole, so the north pole will want to come out of the page towards you. And for the south pole, the field line is into the page but since that's representative for a North Pole's behavior, the South Pole will also come out of the page towards you like the North Pole is coming. Now, by Newton's third law, we know that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So the fact that this wire's magnetic field is pushing the magnets out of the page, uh, it will be equally and oppositely opposed by the force this magnetic field by these magnets is applying on the wire. So if the magnets are being pushed out of the page, the wire is going to be pushed into the page. And that gives us the direction of this force over here. Now, the reason why the electric and magnetic field actually behave in this way is really, really interesting and actually comes from Einstein's theory of special relativity. Uh, Veritasium and Minute Physics made a really interesting video about this, so I'll link that in the description. I highly recommend you check it out. But anyways, so uh, in the early 1900s, Sir John Ambrose Fleming uh, came up with a nice little rule to remember this direction that is going to be uh, produced of the force on the wire so that we don't have to use this Newton's third law logic every time and it goes as such. So you make a sort of finger gun with your left hand. So your thumb is pointing upwards and your index and middle finger are pointing outwards. Then you take your, uh, you leave your index finger as it is, but you take your middle finger and you pivot it 90 degrees to the right. 
all right so all of these three fingers are mutually perpendicular and then you curl your other two fingers something like that wait that's too many yes my drawings incredible thank you um, and so you align your thumb with the, the you, sorry your thumb is going to give you the direction of the force which we're looking for so to find that we need to align our uh, index finger with the direction of the magnetic field and we need to align our middle finger with the direction of the current remember that this is the direction of the current not the direction of the electrons flowing so you have to align your finger with conventional the direction of the conventional current which is from left to right and so uh, once you do that you'll see if we align our uh, oh god if we align our middle finger in that direction our uh, ring finger sorry our index finger downwards our thumb will point into the screen or into the page and hence the force is into the page now I really love this uh, rule because everyone uh, during our exams is just holding up their right finger for the corkscrew rule and their left finger for this rule and it looks like everybody is just throwing up all sorts of signs. But anyways, the easiest way to remember which finger represents what in my opinion is to remember the acronym FBI. So in that order, F, the first, uh, your thumb comes first, so it's going to be the force then second comes b and second comes your uh, index finger so it's going to be the b field or the magnetic field if you remember from bill sine theta b gives the magnetic field strength uh, and lastly the i is going to represent current uh, as in the equation and so your middle finger the third finger is going to represent the third letter i current Say now that the angle between the magnetic field and the current is not 90, as we're assuming it to be in this case. Uh, you can simply align your middle finger with the direction of the current uh, so that the angle becomes whatever angle theta there exists. And you'll notice that as long as you keep the magnetic field and the current in the same plane, that is to say both of these fingers over here are perpendicular to the thumb, then the direction of the force will remain the same no matter the angle and this is due to the uh, properties of a vector sorry a vector product that you might have learned about in maths